In this video, we're going to demonstrate mapping data from 61850 to DNP3. We'll use the 61850 client component in the SCADA data gateway to read the three servers that we simulated in the previous example. We'll map those points to DNP3 and report them up to a communication protocol test harness that's simulating a master. The DNP3 connection will be utilizing DNP3 SAV5, or Secure Authentication Version 5, the current uh, secure authentication version approved by the DNP users group. For this demo, the SCADA data gateway is running on an embedded PC. Here you can see the embedded PC. This particular one is made by Advantech. You can actually order this. It has a specific part number from Advantech pre-configured, ready to run the SCADA data gateway. So here we see a remote desktop connection to the embedded PC that I showed you a moment ago. And on that embedded PC, we're running the SCADA data gateway. We're running it in GUI mode. You would probably actually run this as a service in an actual application, but services aren't very exciting to look at because there's no user interface. So for the demo purposes, we're running it on a, in GUI mode. So here we see a remote desktop connection to the embedded PC that I showed you just a moment ago. And on that embedded PC, we see the SCADA data gateway. In this window, we can see in the left-hand side a tree indicating the various connections that are configured. We have three IEC 61850 client connections. We've called them Breaker 1, Breaker 2, Breaker 3. These are each connected to one of the instances of Anvil that we ran in the previous video simulating that breaker. We also have a DNP3 outstation channel. This channel is configured running DNP3 Secure Authentication version 5. And then we're mapping points from those three IEC 61850 connections to the DNP connection. I should point out all of these names are user configurable. So in a real world application, you can name them whatever makes sense for your application. If we look at one of these IEC 61850 client connections, we can expand it out and see the various report control blocks. And we can expand out below that and read all the way down to individual points. Now one nice feature of the SCADA data gateway is that it will summarize the points that are below. So for example, if we come here and click A, it will show us all of the A values below that phase A, phase B, and phase C currents. If we go one level higher and just click on the MMXU, we can actually see the voltages and the currents that are part of that remote control block. And if you notice these values are changing every five seconds because we're running that same simulation in Anvil that's simulating the various states of the breaker, stepping through the flowchart, changing values every five seconds. And if you notice down in the protocol analyzer window, we're seeing periodic updates. As those values are changing, we have the gateway configured to send unsolicited responses to the master, sending those data updates. Back on my host PC, we have the SCADA data gateway running and also the Insight OPC viewer. In the test harness, notice the protocol analyzer log is showing the communications from the SCADA data gateway. And the blue lines that you see are uh, indications of secure authentication events. So we can see secure authentication running as those values are updated. On the right side, we see the OPC XML DA client. Um, this is showing the phase A current for each of the three breakers and you can notice that they change as the gateway reports new values. This is being uh, displayed via Insight, our new graphical interface tool, and it's an OPC XML DA browser, so connecting directly to the gateway uh, that's running on the remote box and displaying those changes. Focusing back on the test harness, we're now looking at the data window in the test harness. And like the SCADA data gateway, the data window summarizes the points below. So here I'm showing everything coming in from that connection, all of the binary inputs, which represent breaker states, the analog inputs, which represent the various voltages and currents, and also secure authentication security statistics. If I scroll over to the right, you can see that the, the test harness has the option to name values. I've only named them for the first breaker, but you can store that description in the workspace with the test harness, and then you get that uh, English text uh, description of each of the points if you so desire. Again, those descriptions completely uh, configurable. You can configure them however you want for your device. 
So there you have it. In this demo, you saw first of all that we showed how you can create a real-world IEC 61850 device. We gave two examples, one using our NCC source code library for the IEC 61850 server. That was running on a Raspberry Pi board. We also showed using the .NET protocol components to write the breaker demo that we used in these videos. We showed Hammer connecting to those real-world devices and gathering states and writing out a CSV file, comma, separated value file that creates a simulation file for Anvil. We showed multiple instances of Anvil running that file. And we showed SCADA Data Gateway connecting to each of those instances of Anvil, receiving updates, mapping them to DNP3, and displaying those values in a DNP3 communication protocol test harness simulating a DNP3 master. And we also showed the inside OPC XML DA viewer uh, also reading values from the SCADA Data Gateway. We hope you found this demo useful. Uh, we certainly hope that uh, it sparks some ideas on how these products can be used in your application, whether it's for developing a new device, testing a device, or integrating protocols in your system. Feel free to contact us. Uh, contact sales at trianglemicroworks.com for any sales-related questions. Contact support at trianglemicroworks.com for any technical issues. And we would appreciate hearing your feedback uh, if you found these videos useful or if you have any questions about how you can use them in your products. Thank you.